All right, we're talking about vector multiplication and projection. So I have this example here with vector p, which is 2 in the x direction, minus 1 in the y direction, 2 in the z direction, and vector q, 2 in the x direction, minus 3 in the y direction, and 1 in the z direction. And find, we're going to find all sorts of good things here, starting with a, which is p dot q, so the dot product. So for the dot product, this is the scalar multiplication of p with q. So we're going to take the, uh, the, the, the x component of p times the x component of q. So that's 2 times 2. So I'll just write that here, 2 times 2, plus the y component of p times the y component of q. So that would be minus 1 times minus 3, plus then the z component of p times the z component of q, so that's 2 times 1. So this is the way the dot product is defined mathematically. So we have 4 plus 3 plus 2, right? So that's 9, and that's the answer for part A. All right, part B, not to be outdone, we're going to do the cross product, p cross q. So this is the vector multiplication. So the way you do that, is set up this determinant. So we're going to go uh, put the ax there, ay here, az here, and then we're going to put the p's, uh, the p components here, 2, minus 1, 2, and then the, the q components underneath, 2, minus 3, and 1. So we need to calculate that determinant. So the way we do this uh, if you're if you're not strong in linear algebra, remember that um, we start here with this guy, and then we kind of cancel out these things, right? And so what we do is we write, um, so we we and then we we do the multiplication of what's left. So we take the minus one times one and then subtract the minus three times the two. And then we, we say that that is the, whatever we circled there, that's the ax component. Plus, or actually then it's minus, and then we move on to the next component. So this guy here, ay, my drawing is going to get junky really quickly. But so now we're looking at the green, and so you can see, um, so we've got minus, so the, the second term is just always minus, that's the way you calculate these determinants. And then we've got a 2 and a 1 on the diagonal, on the main diagonal, so we get 2 times 1 minus, then 2 times 2 on the, on the backwards diagonal. And then we circled ay, so this is the ay component. And then uh, lastly, we're going to, I'll do this in purple, we're going to do the az component, so cross out these guys, cross out these guys, and then do what's left, so we got plus, and then so we've got 2 times minus 3, 2 times minus 3, and then minus 2 times minus 1. And that's, again, we circled the z. So that's the az. Okay, so now we just you know calculate these things. So minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, and then uh, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. So we have minus 1 minus minus 6, so minus 1 plus 6 is 5 ax. Okay, and then for the y we've got, uh, in, in the brackets we have 2, minus 4, so that's minus 2, and then we have this minus here, so that's plus, uh, plus 2, right, plus 2ay. Again, that was 2 minus 4 is minus 2, and then the minus makes plus 2. And then for the z, we have inside the brackets minus 6 and minus minus 2. So minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4, minus 4az. So that is the cross product, or the vector product of P with Q. Okay, moving on, I'm going to do C over here. The angle between P and Q. So if, if you're interested in the angle between the vectors, you can lean on the dot product to get you that, and the geometric interpretation of the dot product is that it is the, the magnitude of the first vector, so P without the arrow, times the magnitude of the second vector, q without the arrow, times the cosine 
of the angle between them. This is the geometric interpretation of it. So we already computed the dot product. That was part A. That was 9. Right? So let us get, uh, or let, I guess we'll solve for the cosine of the angle. Okay, that would be 9 over. Now we need the the magnitude of vector p. So the magnitude of vector p, we can we can use Pythagorean theorem, right? The square root of 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And then the magnitude of vector q, again Pythagorean theorem, the square root of 2 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 1 squared, right? So that's the denominator. 9 is on top. Okay, so that looks like it comes out to be 9 over, uh, what is that? 3 root 14, I believe. So the 3's cancel, we're left with 3 over root 14. Okay, and then we want the angle in between them. So how do we get rid of the cosine? We take the inverse cosine, right? The inverse cosine of 3 over four, root 14, and that is 36.7 degrees up to three significant digits. Okay, so what we've got is like vector p here, and then we've got vector q, uh, q here and so this is 36.7 degrees also acceptable the dot product gives you the smaller of the two angles but um, just we just said what's a, what's the angle in between them so also acceptable is 30 or 360 degrees minus 36.7 degrees which is 323 degrees up to three significant digits so uh, that's also acceptable Okay, part D, a unit vector perpendicular to both P and Q. Okay, so what we said about the cross product was that when, based on the right-hand rule, that when you take P and you cross it with Q, what you end up with is a vector that is perpendicular to both P and Q. So right away, we can, we can use what we did in B. B is actually perpendicular. To p and q. Okay, but now we just have to normalize it to unit length. So what we can do is just take 5ax plus 2ay minus 4az and divide it by its own length. So its length is 5 squared plus 2 squared plus minus 4 squared, square root of that. Okay, and so what we do is we take 5 divided by that square root, that's the x component, 2 divided by the square root, that's the y component, minus 4 divided by that square root is the y component, and so that gives us 0 0.745 ax plus 0 0.298 ay minus 0 0.5 nine six a z right so that's the answer up to three significant digits that's a unit vector perpendicular to both p and q also acceptable then is the reverse of that which would be negative zero point seven four five a x minus zero point two nine eight a y plus zero point five nine six a z that is also an acceptable answer right if the first answer was perpendicular then if we just reverse the arrow that still is perpendicular and again i want to point out the way we started this problem was that the cross product p and q the cross product of those two things gives you an answer that's perpendicular that's always the case when you cross two vectors together the resultant is perpendicular to those two vectors that you crossed together Okay, now finally, E. I'm going to have to make some room here. Um, we're going to get P projected onto Q. P projected onto Q. So um, what we can do, well, let me erase this first of all. Give us some space. 
Okay. Okay, so here's part E. P projected onto Q. So the notation that we're going to use is P vector onto Q like that. Okay, and you know we covered this in the in the lecture videos. This is P dotted with Q or dotted with a unit vector, excuse me, a unit vector in the direction of Q times that unit vector in the direction of Q. Okay, so let us get a unit vector in the direction of Q. How do we do that? So I've got vector Q there, which is 2AX minus 3AY plus AZ, right? And then I'm going to divide that by its own length. So that would be the square root of 2 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 1 squared. Okay, and so that gives me 0 0.555 AX minus 0 0.802 AY plus 0 0.267 AZ. Okay, that's the unit vector that points along Q. So now I need to just carry out this thing here, p dot that unit vector times that unit vector. So when I do p dot this unit vector, I take, remember the dot product is the x component times the x component. So I'll have, I'll have uh, p subscript q equals, so I'll have 2 times 0.555, right, up to three significant digits. That will be my, uh, so I've, I've got, yeah, I've got 2 times 0.555. Then I've got, um, in the y direction, I've got minus 1 times minus 0 0.802. So plus minus 1 times minus 0 0.802. And then in the z direction, I have a 2, and I have a point. 267. So plus 2 times 0 0.267. So that's the dot product. Everything in the brackets is the dot product. Then I take this and I multiply by vector uh, a sub q, that unit vector in the direction of q, which is this thing here. So we, we, we just, I'll just put a sub q there for right now. And so when I compute the dot product, I compute everything in the square brackets. That gives me a number, right? So I get I get that number, and then I take that number times each one of these components. So I take this number times 0.555 ax, that number times negative 0.802 ay, and that number times 0.267 az. And what I end up getting, up to three significant digits, is 1.29. AX minus 1.93 AY plus 0 0.642 AZ. And that is the answer. I guess I should put a put a box around it.